Is Deadpool and Wolverine a successful parody of the MCU format, or is it just a failed attempt at mocking the kind of stagnant superhero genre. While Ryan Reynolds making jabs at Disney from under Fox's wing might have been funny in the previous two entries, the studio couldn't afford another X-Men. Do those jokes hit the same when they're coming from the mouth of the mouse himself? This video is a quick dive into what makes a good parody, and to sum up my argument, self-awareness doesn't exclude you from falling into the same trappings that you're trying to critique. Why doesn't Deadpool and Wolverine have the source? Did I sound hip and cool saying that? Nah, yeah, no, it felt weird. Crafting a good parody is rather complex. You have to be able to accurately imitate the source material you're paradising so that the audience can recognize what you're referencing, but not so much that your work is just an imitation of it. You have to be able to use your parody as a vessel to critique the source material, which requires both a very deep understanding of your target, as well as a very controlled degree of self-awareness to make sure that you don't fall into the same trappings that you're trying to criticize. Parody often comes from a place of love for the source material. To properly critique something, you've got to have a pretty strong understanding of it in the first place. A good parody doesn't base its criticism off of surface level observations that anyone in the audience could have noted. It focuses on the underlying structure of the work, its intentions, shortcomings, and successes. But with that out of the way, here's my gripe with Deadpool and Wolverine. I think it fails as a parody because it only provides shallow and unimaginative critique while also falling into the same trappings of the MCU formula it's trying to criticize. Let's go through a quick checklist. Does Deadpool and Wolverine try to criticize the superhero movie formula. 110%, the movie makes it super clear from the get-go. I'm Marvel Jesus, you <laughs> Does Deadpool and Wolverine understand the Marvel movie formula? Well, it follows the template damn well. And if the jokes about pacing and throwaway cameos are anything to go off of, yeah. Yeah, it does. So far, it's ticking all the boxes we've laid out that a parody needs to nail. But, next question, does Deadpool and Wolverine understand why the Marvel formula is critiqued for being tired and one-dimensional? Well, the movie is definitely aware of those criticisms, but it also simultaneously follows in a lot of the same footsteps of the movies it's trying to mock. Does it subvert tropes of the genre in a way that's humorous or interesting? Um, no. Beyond the superficial swearing and violence that comes with an R-rated movie, the single most subversive moment is when Cassandra Nova turns Johnny Storm into the pulp that they put in the chicken nugget machine at Macca's. Before people get up in arms about the way I've painted the movie so far, I do want to clarify one thing. It is a lot, and I mean a lot of fun. I think most of the jokes are at least a little funny, even if the writing hasn't really evolved from Deadpool's first movie in 2016. But as a tribute or send off to the Fox era of X-Men movies, I wouldn't say it fails, but I wouldn't say it succeeds at tugging on your heartstrings either. Yeah, baby. Do you want to contribute to the video? It's cat pool. Okay, good chat. While Deadpool continues to crack jokes criticizing the superhero genre in an attempt to be self-aware, Pegging isn't new for me, friendo, but it is for Disney. The jokes often feel like low-hanging fruit, easy jabs that pretty much anyone in the audience can understand and laugh at, but are ultimately unfulfilling and shallow because anyone in the audience could also make that joke. As mentioned earlier, for a parody to really feel compelling, it needs to have a deeper understanding of the source material than the audience does. It needs to bring up criticisms that your average viewer is not going to think of if they've watched one or two Marvel movies. There's some references and jokes in there that are deeper cuts for more dedicated fans, but a majority of the quips are surface level observations. Deadpool 3 is doing the thing that many people have criticized the MCU for throughout its entire life. Here's the thing you know, now clap. It's something that makes recent releases feel like nothing more than an arcade shooter like Virtua Cop. You have characters pop up in your face and you react accordingly and that's it. This is a particularly prominent flaw when you consider all the jabs at the multiverse nonsense that Deadpool makes throughout this movie. To be fair, the movie does get one bit of critique right, and that's the concept of anchor beings as a metaphor for characters or actors that studios build a franchise around. For much of the lifespan of Fox's X-Men franchise, Hugh Jackman's take on Wolverine has been pretty central. From being a core part of the team in the first few movies to his own run of solo adventures, he starred in all but four movies in the Fox universe. 
After killing off the feral Canadian in 2017's Logan, X-Men movies didn't do too hot, both in the box office and in the eyes of audiences. Effectively damning the franchise like we see with the timeline unraveling in Deadpool and Wolverine. While this is the strongest critique the movie is able to deliver about the superhero genre, or industry really, it chooses to punch down at a now dead franchise without the mouse looking in the mirror and seeing the same flaws in his own reflection. The first decade of the MCU heavily revolved around Robert Downey Jr's Iron Man in a very similar fashion to how the X-Men movies relied on Jackman's Wolverine. While it's definitely not fair to say that those are equal comparisons, the MCU definitely had a much better balanced roster of leads. The metaphor still works and I think in a couple of years it'll be even more apt. Since the death of Tony Stark in Endgame, the MCU has lost its focus, discarding a decade of interconnected patient storytelling for… what exactly? The mega franchise seems to have lost any sense of direction beyond using the multiverse as a gimmick to get butts back in seats. The MCU is unraveling, much the same as the Fox timeline is in Deadpool 3. Not financially yet, but narratively. That brings us over to the second part of my argument. Deadpool and Wolverine fails as a parody because the movie is still all the things it attempts to mock. Do the attempts at critiquing Disney's formula really work when they're coming from the mouth of the mouse himself? As I mentioned before, a majority of the meta-commentary jokes are rather surface level, poking fun at well-known tropes and flaws. I'll admit that I chuckled at Deadpool's reaction to Blade referring to himself as the one and only Blade. Some motherfuckers are always trying to ice skate up here. Whether that was intended as a jab at Wesley Snipes being replaced by Mashallah Ali in the eventual future, or the fact that the Blade project is stuck in development hell for what seems like an eternity now, it's an entertaining nod to the audience that wasn't just a simple observation that anyone could make after watching one or two Marvel movies. But other quips only half work, like repeatedly calling out the multiverse gimmick for being overused so much that it's gotten stale in just a handful of years. While Deadpool 3 does take the piss out of the larger multiverse shenanigans, it doesn't really critique it. Instead, it uses the multiverse in the same way that it's supposedly poking fun at Marvel for. Pointless cameos and fan service, which is especially notable in the big Deadpool core fight at the end of the movie. In the same way, the movie points out the timeline ripper as another nonsense magical MacGuffin, but then fails to subvert anything about that trope. It doesn't critique it in any way. The Timeline Ripper still acts as a MacGuffin throughout the entire movie. Yo, Editor Josh here, just to add that when we make fun of the trope at the start of the movie, especially in a parody format like this is kind of meant to be, then you expect that trope to be subverted at some point. There needs to be something that challenges it. Take Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark when they're looking for the Ark of the Covenant. At the start of the movie, Indiana Jones is a skeptic. He doesn't believe that the Ark actually has any supernatural power, that it's just a religious or historic artifact. What are you trying to do, scare me? You sound like my mother. We've known each other for a long time. I don't believe in magic, a lot of superstitious hocus pocus. But the Nazis believe that it is this world ending super weapon. Power of God or something. Indy's skepticism is challenged as they progress through the movie and they come across supernatural shit. That's part of his character arc, is challenging that skepticism. But in Deadpool and Wolverine, while Deadpool makes fun of the magical MacGuffin timeline ripper, it's just, that's a silly plot device. And then in the third act, they just take the silly plot device seriously. That's my issue, is that it's not used to either subvert uh, expectations in a way that could be like challenging the characters' beliefs, and it's also not challenging the tropes of the genre. They just don't do anything with it. That's the problem. And here's my biggest gripe as someone that's a professional editor outside of YouTube. The movie makes multiple jokes about pacing, and yet is paced horrifically. The opening TVA fight is a fun introduction to the movie, but to me, it felt like it overstayed its welcome. It's not a good sign when your audience is left thinking, okay, I get the joke, you've delivered the punchline, can we move on now? And I felt that way throughout a good chunk of the movie. In a similar vein, the movie pokes fun at the exposition dumps that Marvel can definitely fall into as a lazy writing style, but then spends multiple scenes dumping pointless exposition onto the viewer that 
that doesn't add any depth to the characters nor the story. Now, you could argue that Deadpool and Wolverine falling into the same trappings and the tropes that it's critiquing is intentional. That's part of parody, right? You mimic the things that your source material does, even if they're bad. While I think that argument's on the right track, there's two issues that I've got. One, parody typically uses exaggeration to emphasize the shortcomings of the source material. And two, Deadpool 3 just feels like most any Marvel movie. Let's start with that first point by looking at Austin Powers, a parody of 60s spy flicks. Here, the writers take these stereotypically insane schemes that spy villains would come up with and then exaggerates them to the point of absurdity. One million dollars. <laughs> it makes it very clear that they're making fun of how ridiculous it is that these old spy movies would play these ideas straight and serious. You'll notice that all of the sharks have laser beams attached to their heads. Austin himself would point out the flaws and in the various traps and evil plans, often just stepping around the threat or having the antagonist one-up them in a way that escalates the absurdity even further. Is it cold in here? On the flip side, nothing in Deadpool 3 is exaggerated to the point of parody. It tries to make fun of the Marvel tropes, but instead it just mimics them. I finished shooting, but I wanted to add this one thought about why Deadpool 3 doesn't feel exaggerated enough. And that is because the superhero genre is already kind of fucking insane, isn't it? Like we've kind of jumped the shark multiple times. And so when it comes to trying to make fun of these already ridiculous premises, it's kind of hard to exaggerate it to the point that we would with like Austin Powers, right? Where it's painted as like so ridiculous in comparison to the relatively straight faced spy movies of the 60s. But the superhero movies of the 2020s so far are kind of so absurd on their own that exaggerating it is kind of difficult. Anyway, back to whatever I was saying. And that brings us to my second point, that it feels like any other Marvel movie, but with more swearing and blood. Shut the fuck up. It's really just hitting the same beats that we've seen in every Marvel movie for the past decade. Back to my initial statement at the start of the video. Self-awareness doesn't exclude you from falling into the same trappings that you're trying to critique. Deadpool and Wolverine is fully self-aware. For some, arguably even most audiences, that self-awareness is enough. That's what people watch Deadpool movies for, a little bit of meta-commentary that feels a tiny bit subversive. For me, this one didn't do it. Still a fun watch, but if you want my other thoughts on the movie, you can go listen to me ramble for half an hour on the second channel. Thank you for watching. Let me know in the comments if you think I'm way off the mark for this one, or if I've got a point. And maybe if you really enjoyed the video, you could subscribe or send it to a friend. Start an argument. I want to hear how that goes.